John here guys, and today we're talking about the full review and build up of the 533 Switchback. That's right. Uh, this is essentially the championship edition, and I tried to include as many of the components used by the world multi GP champion Evan Turner. Every man in Russia, every man in the world. <laughs> Every man in Japan, every man in Europe, every man in America, the champion of the whole world. It's a big deal. So I kept moving until I did. As possible. I understand that he was using some 2207X Nova motors. I believe that's right. And that's what I have on here, right here. Also, I'm using the Runcam Racer uh, Nano Camera. I can't remember if he used that camera or not. Uh, and of course, I am using one of my favorite stacks, the Emax Mini Magnum. Now that was not the stack that I was initially gonna go with. I was initially going to go with the Heli Nation Gigawatt Talon stack and had a bit of an issue, guys. Uh, included in the bottom of this frame is a series of press nuts in like that middle plate. And depending on what kind of frame configuration you go with, there are two in the middle that may or may not need to be used. And uh, I did notice when I mounted up my ESC, my brand new ESC, the talent, and it's so beautiful with the nice little heat sink on top. Um, I did notice um, that I only had about one millimeter of clearance between that press nut and the bottom of that stack. And I thought to myself, well, it's probably fine. I mean, it's a whole millimeter, but I didn't really think it through too clearly because I had that on gummies. And what our gummies gonna do, they're gonna squish a little bit. And on my maiden flight in front of my nephews that I was watching, I had them come outside, come and check this out, doing a maiden right before race day, the day before. Um, and it <laughs> burst into flames uh, about five seconds after I took off. Now, um, I'm not blaming 533 for this. Um, I talked about this with some of my local guys, a couple other guys. Matt Max is actually trying out this frame as well. And uh, he noted that they mentioned in one of their videos to pay careful attention to that. Now, I didn't watch those videos because a lot of times whenever I'm reviewing, I try not to pay attention. Um, and also, I saw it. I saw it. I should have known it was going to be a problem. So that's on me. Um, now, a lot of times in a review, I'll kind of go with what I think the average user experience would have been. I think the average user experience would have been they probably would have watched the video and common sense would have told you, you know, lift it up a little bit more. Um, but since I was in such a rush for race day, I decided to just try to get it together as soon as possible and went ahead and flew it anyway. And so that was on me. My nephews were like sitting there right beside me. Now this is a lesson to everyone. When you're doing a maiden, don't do it in your house. One, which I didn't. Don't fly it way far away or whatever. I kept it, you know, within 10 or 15 feet of me, very close to the grass. You always do that for about 10, 20, 30 seconds anyway uh, on any new build now one that's because you want to check the motor temperatures and two in case there is an issue like that you're totally safe so my nephews were like ah, 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 and i was like ah. so i ran over there i grabbed it i tried to pick it up really quickly and uh and so my nephew was like is that supposed to happen? No, that's not supposed to happen. What are you, crazy? As soon as I did, you know, just like the rest of the ESC just went, you know, flames shooting out. Um, I've toasted stuff before, but this is probably the first time I actually saw an actual flames. Um, and I was trying to unplug the battery. I couldn't get to it fast enough. The battery leads actually just melted off. Um, so that saved me. Luckily, uh, I was only about four feet away from it. So I was able to get, you know, no damage to any property, no damage to the frame because the fire was isolated between the flight controller and the electronic speed controller. So both of those were toast, but pretty much everything else from the build was okay. Um, so I had to get something built up quickly for the following day. 
That's why I went to my tried and true trusted Emacs Magnum. Now, Emacs Magnum is 20 by 20, but it only uses M2 screws. Now, the holes on this frame are M3. So how do you get about going with that? Well, if you use an M2 screw, an M2 screw with a large enough head, it will actually catch on the press nut and give you some resistance. So you're able to put M2 standoffs on top of that press nut and then it holds in just fine. Um, this gave me a little bit lighter weight than most of my other builds. I'll put the weight on the screen. I can't remember what it was. And it flies really well. Like I said, guys, I had to get the rest of this build up and going in a couple of hours late that night for the race the following day. So I didn't have time to tune it or anything. I just copied settings from one of my other quads. I can't even remember if I did that. I think I just, you know, ran default. And uh, I couldn't believe, like, of course, I was getting a little bit of prop oscillations because I had done no tuning, but... It felt so good, and I can't really put my finger on exactly why. It has a very nice Stretch X design. The uh, I'm using the Gym Fan 51466 uh, props, and you can see that there's a little, there's not a ton of clearance to the center, so everything is very compact, which means it's going to perform and handle very well in the air. Uh, in addition to that, uh, just the overall light weight. Um, and I noticed that the champ um, was using 2207 motors, not 2207.5. A lot of people were using. I'm wondering um, if he went, you know, made that decision because these are a little bit more efficient. I did notice when I was using a lot of 2207.5s that they did seem to be a slightly more amp hungry than regular 2207. This was, other than my blender setting my stack on fire. It was quite easy to build up. I really love how easy it is to do an arm stop, an arm swap with a single screw. I love that mid plate design where you have slots that fit this in. Um, you have the same advantage of slots as one of those aluminum middle plate frames, uh, but you can have everything cut out of carbon that reduces the price, I think, uh, potentially. And it's also gonna allow you to keep the weight very, very, very low. Now, I was a little bit worried about this camera mount because it does stick out a little bit. Um, this frame does have optional side force generators. Now, Matt Max, I don't know if it was a joke or serious, but last year, in the middle of last year, he came up with a 3D printed design that was kind of a brace that he would put on the side that was vertical like that. And he was calling them brudders because they were like brace rudders. Uh, I don't know if that was a joke or not, but this frame has the uh, optional of being able to do that. And it has these little holes right here on the bottom of the frame. I didn't really run mine that way because I just, I typically run frames like this. Um, sometimes I'll run a brace on the front if it's available. There's not one available for this frame, but I think it would be very easy to be able to mount one up with uh, using the same holes that the uh, side force generators use. The... One thing that I like about this is that all the 3D printed parts are available for you to download on Thingiverse and print your own. I did know that the flip stick that is printed out of TPU didn't last me the whole day. I did have one very hard crash. I think I ended up breaking a gate with that crash. It was really hard. And uh, I can't remember if I, I may not have it on DVR, I'm not sure. Um, but the only thing that broke was this little flippy thing. Um, and that's not a big problem because I went over to show Matt Max, who was also flying his that day. He reached in his case, pulled me out a spare that he had already printed. So normally if this thing breaking very easily would have been a couple of points off, but since they released the files, you can print as many spares as you want um, or customize the design. Um, that is not a con at all. I like how they're using open source kind of a mindset on the prints for this to be able to print as many as you want of your own, have a readily available amount of spares, and you can actually customize this based on if you end up changing motors down the road, you can customize these prints to match those motors. Speaking of matches these motors, um, this is, I wanted to, you know, get together some of the components that were used to win the championship, but 
Heads Up has actually come out with his own signature motor. Uh, it matches this championship um, teal colorway beautifully. These are some of the best looking motors I've seen. Um, I'm really, really anxious to try this set. Golly, I got so much stuff in the pipeline right now, but take a look at those. I'll leave the link in the description for those motors as well. Beautiful, beautiful motors. Has sort of a black and teal. It's just really a different kind of color scheme than we're used to seeing on a lot of the um, FEV options. And it's not like that's gonna make you faster, but you also wanna be able to look stylish while you're flying, guys. Um, now, apologies for the way that this thing looks. I committed one of the cardinal sins of reviewing, um, which was I did not take a ton of photos and video before I took it out to the race. Because uh, you always want to get that, that nice clean footage, the nice clean looks of it before you go out and wreck it and get grass and everything in it. I, I, I didn't do that just because of the, I was very pressed for time. So forgive me. What frame are you gonna be running for the 2020 season? There's a lot of great options out there. This one, I really particularly um, appreciate the low cost. Um, I was very happy to see um, some branded products come out for the Champ. I think the Champ should always enjoy um, some of that brand recognition that comes along with being the Champ. And I was very excited to see. I noticed that he really didn't have too many you know, branded products, products, but now he's got the switchback frame, the heads up motors, and I believe the R38 prop is especially the heads up prop. So, the champion of the whole world, but better than all of those before me. <laughs> we'll see what he comes out with next. Looking forward to seeing him compete in um, DRL. Him versus Vanover on that other stage is gonna be quite a sight to see. Very exciting. What a time to be flying FPV and racing. Thanks, guys.